You can become a professional self-taught developer, but you have to follow the right roadmap. Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you a number of tips, resources, and flat out critical information for people who want to become self-taught coders, developers, or engineers. When I'm done, you'll know the exact roadmap to follow if you want to become a professional coder and learn on your own. My name is Mark Lassoff, and I've taught coding and design to over 2 million people online, in the corporate classroom, and in informal education programs all over the world. My company, Framework, has certified thousands of new digital creators in web development, mobile, and digital design. If you're someone who's seeking to become a digital professional like a web developer, digital designer, or mobile app creator, please subscribe now. Don't forget to hit the little bell so you're alerted to the new videos we publish each week. Let's get started with 10 tips and resources for self-taught developers. Here's tip number one. Start simple and grow context. I'm simplifying this a bit, but we learn new things based on what we already know. The word for this is context. What you've already learned in life provides a context for all the things you're gonna know later. Let me give you an example. Back in school, at some point, you probably learned algebra, but you didn't learn algebra before you had context, and that context was arithmetic. Understanding arithmetic was a prerequisite for understanding algebra. Don't worry, you don't need to know a lot of math to be a successful developer. My point is that if you start off coding learning something complex like algebra before having the context, you're making the road more difficult for yourself. Don't start learning with enterprise-level Java, which is very complex. Start learning with HTML, a markup language, that will teach you a lot about the coding process. From learning HTML, you'll know how to enter code into an editor, find bugs, and how to test that code. You'll learn how to document and store and version your code. That will provide you a context for more complex technologies later, like JavaScript and PHP. The JavaScript and PHP will provide an excellent context for you to, in turn, learn enterprise-level languages, like Java. Here's tip two, don't isolate yourself. Self-taught should not mean isolated and alone. I'd recommend that you find local coding groups. There are meetups for technology, coding, and digital design almost everywhere in the country. Join and you'll meet others who are learning too. Be open with family and friends about what you're doing and what your goals are. Talk about your work. You need to build a support system for yourself so that you can be successful. It's so much harder to do this alone. Those who are formally trained have classmates and people to do projects with. When I was in school, I created a support system of friends who were also studying coding. Even if you're in an area with no developer activity, there's a huge community of online learners that you can get active with. I've included a link for our online community below, and you can join for free. If you're feeling alone while you're learning, please reach out. Learning to code is always gonna be a struggle, and I think it's always better to struggle with friends than to struggle alone. Tip number three is create a learning schedule. So this year, instead of writing down my goals for the year, I tried something different. I'm not different from most people. I create goals for each new year and then fail to reach them. So this year, instead of writing down my goals, I created systems that I would use to accomplish the things I wanted to accomplish. One of these systems was a learning schedule. I set aside a few hours each Sunday morning as my tutorial and learning time. It's actually on my calendar. While I'm not new to coding, there's always a new language, library, or piece of software to learn. So I created my own learning schedule, and I suggest that you do the same. Put time on your calendar each week for learning. Maybe set aside time on Monday night to watch video tutorials, and a couple hours for coding labs and projects on Wednesday or Friday. Whatever schedule you choose, make sure you write it down and put it on your calendar. As I've discovered, the system for reaching your goal is much more important than the goal itself. Tip four, take advantage of the free courses on Udemy and other places online. There are thousands of free courses out there on digital development and design. Take advantage of them. You have to be selective. To be honest, many of the free courses are worth what you pay for them, nothing. 
However, there are hundreds of others that are every bit as good as the paid courses out there. Udemy, for example, has hundreds of free courses on development. Once you find a course and an instructor you like, be one of the few people who finishes the online course. Dedicate yourself to it. One of the problems with free courses is there are so many of them out there. It can take a while to find the real gems. It can also be paralyzing to look at all the courses and to figure out where to start. If you look at the description below, I have a link that gives you access to my free HTML5 specialist certification course. It's where all of my online students start. Just click the link for free access. It's normally 99 bucks, and this is a great course to start with because it gives you great context for future learning, and you get a LinkedIn compatible certification to boot. Tip five, build lots of projects. This is the digital version of learning to ride a bicycle. You have to actually get on the bike and ride to learn. When you take courses, read books and blog articles, your learning is a bit disjointed. Sure, you learn a bunch of individual skills, but it's difficult to see how they all fit together. That's where projects come in. Projects are essential to integrate the different learning you've done and understand how to build a complete app from beginning to end. I have several project videos on YouTube, but just pick a project of reasonable scope that you think would be fun. For example, you could build a tic-tac-toe game, a tip calculator, and eventually you'll move on to more complex apps like an arcade game or blogging application. Tip number six, start your portfolios yesterday. Notice I used portfolios, not the singular portfolio. There are two types of employers out there. Technical employers are gonna to wanna to see a GitHub account as your portfolio. In the GitHub account should be a number of repositories for your projects and code labs. As a new developer, it's important to show a progression of your learning. Because they're a technical employer, you're likely being interviewed by a coder who wants to look at your code. Your GitHub should show evidence of everything you've accomplished and learned during your period of self-teaching. A number of employers are non-technical, however, especially employers that hire new developers. I was once the only technical employee of an organic pet food company. I was in charge of their entire e-commerce site and was the only one on the property who knew how to code. For these types of employers, you need a web portfolio. They want to see and interact with completed projects. Showing them code that they don't understand will more than likely work against you in the interview process. So for this type of employer, having a web presence that they can see and touch is critical. It's never too early to start your portfolios. Create a repository for your code exercises and labs, even if you're not ready to start projects yet. Showing the effort you put into learning, as well as your growth, will score points with many potential employers. We still have a few more really valuable tips to go, including the exact order you should learn current languages and technologies to maximize your chances on the job market. Before we continue, I'd like to know, how many of you watching this are seeking to actually become professional developers? If you are, type the word learning in the comments below. If you'd like, add your own tip, trick, or technique that's helped you as a self-taught developer. I'd like to include some of the best tips in a future video. And now, back to our list. Tip number seven, keep your eyes on Indeed. Indeed.com is the biggest job aggregator on the web. That means that they post jobs from dozens of different sources and display them all. It can be a great tool for research on the kinds of jobs that are available, where and how much they pay. I spend a lot of time on Indeed myself tracking which technologies are hot in the job market and which are shrinking. You might be very surprised by what you find. You can type in any language or job title and Indeed will display a number of relevant jobs, the geography, and the starting salaries. Now here's an extra tip, you didn't pay for this one. Using Indeed's experience level dropdown, select the entry level and you'll filter through the jobs where they are seeking developers with little experience at the beginning of their careers. This can give you a good idea of how the market will be for you and your talents at the end of your self-teaching journey. Tip number eight, get an accountability buddy. We're more likely to complete things if we have accountability for the process. If no one knows what you're doing, it's easy to put things on the back burner as there's no negative consequence. To hold you to your learning goals, I highly recommend an accountability buddy. An accountability buddy is someone you meet with regularly to hold each other accountable for putting in the work necessary to attain your goals. It's one thing to say, 
I'm going to work on a new coding lesson every Saturday morning for three hours. It's quite another when an accountability buddy is checking up on you and making sure you're actually doing what you set out to do. The world is full of distractions and a little accountability goes a long way to us meeting our goals. Tip number nine, take a break once in a while. Learning to code can be a bit of a slog. There is no clear beginning and end point and there always seems like there's more to learn. It's important to take a break every now and again and take the pressure off. Give yourself permission to relax and skip studying for a weekend. Your brain could probably use some time to decompress and doing something fun can recharge your batteries. When you take a break, really take a break. Don't read any technical blogs and get off the Learn to Code channel on Reddit. Focus on something else completely and enjoy. Over the years, I found that people who schedule some breaks into their learning program progress more quickly and generally have fewer setbacks in their learning progress. Tip 10, and this is the one you've been waiting for, your quickest roadmap to success. So over the years, I found that there's a specific roadmap that adds necessary context and layers on complexity when learning to code. Here's the order I recommend you learn languages and technologies in. Start with HTML. This is the foundation of all web development. HTML code provides the scaffolding for every website and many mobile apps. HTML is fairly easy to learn and will allow you to get some success under your belt before you move on to more complex technologies. Follow HTML with CSS, Cascading Style Sheet Language. This is the language of design on the web and it's fairly easy to learn. You'll find it to be interesting and powerful, and if you go beyond the fundamentals, you'll have a strong advantage over many entry-level developers. Once you've got CSS under control, it's time to move on to your first true programming language, JavaScript, which continues to be one of the most in-demand languages. JavaScript provides the interactive layer of all web applications and many mobile apps. It's powerful and free to use. It's more complicated than HTML and CSS, but the context you gain from learning JavaScript will prove invaluable. After learning JavaScript, it's time to complete a few portfolio projects to cement your JavaScript knowledge. At this point, you can start working through some pretty interesting apps, including API-based apps that invoke technologies like geolocation and data storage. With HTML, CSS, and JavaScript under your belt, plus some project experience, I recommend you move on to two of the most popular JavaScript libraries. First, learn jQuery, which provides a JavaScript shorthand. jQuery does some of the heavy lifting when it comes to JavaScript and allows you to write code more efficiently and more economically. The final technology to add to your toolbox is React, a framework for creating entire applications that is increasingly popular. Once you've mastered jQuery and React, start looking for jobs and continue to build your portfolio with projects that use these technologies. Did you find these tips useful? If so, hit the like button for this video. And please do subscribe so that you can get future videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Mark Lassoff for Framework. We offer all sorts of free training opportunities on our website at frameworktv.com. There, you can click the button that says join for free, and we'll send you new, exclusive coding and digital design training content each week. I'll see you in the next video.